viewers, are you fond of culture and have love for a complicated Slavic language? Are you a foodie who's also interested in history? Still did not find a perfect place to go to? No worries whether you are a natural lover or a connoisseur of art and culture, or even a sports lover or a history digger. Poland disappoints no one. So this is why FIRE brings you to the Embassy of Poland where we are going to get you get your spirits high for your visit to Poland. With us we have the Ambassador of Republic of Poland, Mr. Peter Opelinski. Thank you so much His Excellency for your time. Before moving onwards, I would like to uh, introduce you to my co-anchors. On my left, uh, this is Mr. Nasser, who is the anchor of FIRE. And uh, with him is Mr. Shamim, who is also an anchor at FIRE. So His Excellency, please, before, uh, while we start this, um, could you please tell us something about Poland? Something really interesting about Let me first of all welcome you to my humble house. This is Polish house in Islamabad, Pakistan. In Pakistan, we are at home and uh, it's uh, many years of uh, great uh, interactions and uh, wonderful stories which we can share with Pakistani viewers regarding Polish-Pakistani contacts. And I w wish to uh, invite you uh, warmly to Poland, which is a beautiful country uh, presenting any kind of landscapes in which also our Pakistani friends are now living, Pakistani students, businessmen, and uh, quite recently also the c cinema makers. Uh, thank you so much, Excellency, for this uh, uh, compliment. Uh, tell us, uh, more than 16 million tourists visit uh, uh, Poland every year. So can you please tell us a uh, few features of that? Uh, what's the reason behind that? Why one of the most visited uh, country for the tourists? Well, um, uh, I believe that we have uh, much to offer nowadays. Any kind of landscapes from the sea, forests, lakes and mountains, everything is there in Poland, beautiful castles and uh, myself uh, quite recently I've also traveled in Poland uh, as a tourist because uh, this is really worth seeing. Uh, we have a growing number of visitors uh, not only from the West but also from Asia. We want to, um, to create uh, uh, more uh, uh, new areas in which uh, we can also uh, uh, share. Um, quite recently, um, the new idea of um, bringing cinema producers to Poland is also related to our great friends and tourists. I remember my experience with uh, cinema makers uh, in uh, Bollywood who made the Zindagi Nami Legi Dobara film in the Spain, after which uh, very nicely we, uh, a Spanish embassy, got uh, a request for visas from honeymoon travelers. So I hope we can say now Poland me apki ek nayi zindagi milegi. Hamare pas Do you want to see Pakistani honeymoon travelers in in Poland? Any tourists, especially young men and women, we have a wonderful contribution from the young. So it's only for young couples. Not only young, everybody. All there is there is a space and and wonderful arrangements for for everybody to visit Poland. I will mention later on which are the most beautiful uh, locations. I but let me tell you one thing. Yes, yes please yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, to which uh, Pakistan is becoming famous right now in Poland. That is cricket. Cricket was uh, virtually unknown uh, in the past, and now we have uh, cricket teams in every bigger city in Poland. And Warsaw Kings is the team uh, run entirely by young Pakistanis, and they are winning the Cricket Cup uh, for Central, uh, Central European Cricket Cup for Poland. Wow, you know, in, in this region, people worship cricket, by the way. I read a lot about uh, Poland. So, Polish uh, people, they celebrate name day instead of uh, birthday. Tell us, viewers, uh, about this interesting thing. Birthdays are also celebrated, but really, name days are making us uh, uh, special and, and different. This is also related to the tradition in which uh, the, the new, new, newborn child is getting the name after some saint and patron. So, a uh, celebration of, of name names coincides with patron days in, in the Christian Catholic uh, uh, Church, so that uh, once a year uh, you can celebrate uh, name day as well. Uh, can I do that as well or that's only for if Polish you, people? If you find in the, in the calendar we have uh, every day some two or three names uh, indicated so that everybody knows that this is the uh, uh, time that you can celebrate and get uh, good wishes from, from your his Excellency, we've also read that Polish people are the uh, only in European Union who marry the youngest. So is this true? 
That's ex exactly to uh, our statistics that we, I have also read uh, this uh, information, which is, of course, uh, great. And Pol in Poland, uh, uh, we share the same values as in Pakistan. That family so, values. So it's are basically very, very inspired by Pakistanis. So, so we have we have great uh, uh, family links, uh, uh, and, and the rate of divorce is much lower than the other uh, parts of Europe. This is a part of our culture also, part of our history. But, but did, did you copy this from Pakistan and Pakistan rural areas? Because in Pakistan rural areas, people marry in even age of 15 or 14. But you know, uh, Anak Lok, Ek Insan has, so we have probably the same uh, values uh, since uh, times in memorial, just preserved uh, uh, till nowadays, which we are very happy of. Also religion is very important in Poland and spiritual values like in Pakistan as well. So this actually distinguishes you from all the other European countries. His Excellency, what would you tell us about the festivals that Polish people uh, celebrate? Are there some uh, typical Polish um, festivals that you people celebrate? Oh yes, but uh, I know that you have, uh, you'd like to specifically mention some of these. I would like to ask that, that uh, you know, I felt it very interesting. Kupala Day. So what is this? Tell my viewers, please. What is Kupala Day? I read that uh, a partners, they jump on fire, something like that. Would you like to explain this, it, please? This relates to a pre-Christian tradition of the Slavonic tribes, which uh, then comprise uh, for today's Poland. And uh, all these um, dances, celebrations, uh, jumping over the, the fire are related to the old religion of, of Slavonic jumping tribes. Jumping over fire? Yes. Also. And this fire? And also, <laughs> also the other, yes. <laughs> We have fire too, <laughs> but for other purposes. Yes. So I, I was reading that it's it it gives it tell it's a test of your bravery and fate. Do people believe in that? That's yes, that's very old <laughs> tradition, and uh, and uh, we are preserving uh, the other, uh, which is um, uh, celebrating on a very special uh, dates like uh, beginning of summer or beginning of, of autumn. These are the the moments when when all the celebrations coincide pre-Christian or, or nowadays modern Christian and also some Islamic holidays are also celebrated in the same vigor. Yeah. In Kupala Day, reports say uh, if you, you have your partner jump over the fire holding her or his hand, if you come after that with the same holding of hand, then you are lucky otherwise. And also it's, it's uh, you know, um, the uh, vision of, of uh, men, masculine, who, you know, uh, energetic men who, who then may impress women by, by uh, showing their physical strength. <laughs> so basically Polish people do have a lot of um, love for basically, you know, marriages and for the love itself. Oh yes. Yeah. So um, could you tell us something more about the Majranda? Is it called? I don't know how to pronounce it. Majranda, this, um, this is a special holiday which um, starts in the very spring. Um, this is a celebration of um, a spring coming instead of uh, a winter which is now uh, melting and, and uh, coming out, going away. So Majranda is a symbolic figure made of, uh, of woods uh, which is uh, brought to, to the um, river and uh, the symbolic uh, farewell to, to, to the winter is done in such a way. Is there the same one that's a Woodstock festival or that's a different one? Woodstock festival is quite modern. It's a tradition of, of a dozen years or so that the young people gather and they play uh, rock music and, and modern music and also in thousands. Uh, so what is definition in Poland of young people? In Pakistan it's 45 years. <laughs> you said young people. Yes. So how do you define in Poland young people? The, the, the youth uh, up to up to 30. 30. Uh, most, mostly these are... Pakistan by the way has it's entirely different definition of youth. So that was... Uh, tell us something, so 99.7%, one of the most uh, literacy rate you have in the entire Europe. So something about education system in Poland, please. Well, the education Is system... Is it free, uh, door to door, or how, how do you get this result? Education system is, is well established um, and um, really we have also much to offer to our Pakistani friends and students. Uh, uh, best universities of Warsaw and Jagiellonian University and, and also other private universities are open for our Pakistani friends to, to join in for studies. Um, the studies are available also English medium, 
so that uh, no special courses for language courses are requested. I think uh, this is the, the, the area in which we are going also to uh, develop more our, our exchange. Um, we have also initialed some agreements between the universities of Pakistan and Poland, uh, notably Kaida Azam University and uh, uh, Punjab University in Lahore. That uh, exchange of uh, professors is also available nowadays. We are very happy of that. We have much, uh, much to uh, offer each other. So, how would you explain or attract, uh, tell Pakistani people to be there as tourists as 16 million people visited last year uh, Poland so that's something special there so what attraction you have for Pakistani tourists is there any visa relaxation uh, or, or what would you like to give attraction Poland to? is part of the Schengen uh, agreement so the Schengen visa uh, issued by any of Schengen countries uh, allows also free travel to other countries as well. We are uh, trying to be uh, um, uh, the most uh, uh, welcoming among the Schengen regulations uh, and the number of the tourists from Pakistan is increasing, especially for uh, the major events like uh, quite recently we enjoyed uh, the um, big group of Pakistani pilgrims and also tourists during the visit of uh, Pope Francis to Poland. These were the uh, International uh, Youth Days well attended and this gave a, a opportunity to our Pakistani friends to interact with, with uh, our people uh, because they were hosted in the family uh, homes and uh, exchanging views uh, how uh, we celebrate uh, holidays, uh, what are the favorite dishes and uh, you know this acquaintance with the local culture and cuisine and people this is a very wonderful way to... How long, do, how long does it take for a tourist to get a tourist visa? A Pakistani person. The What's the criteria of that? Yes, uh, the, the maximum period uh, for us to issue visa is uh, 14 days, so it's two weeks. So within 40 days, yes, a couple or single or whoever can get that, that visa, tourist visa. Yes, yes, that, that's the maximum, maybe even shortened, but uh, usually uh, our visa section is uh, really well attended by many people uh, willing to go to Poland. So it makes now me you very will happy see. Uh, more visitor, uh, more tourists approaching you for visas after this interview. So uh, tell me something about uh, music without borders. I saw that. So you have started that. Who, who, whose initiative it, it is? We are uh, continuing the project which have been started by my predecessors. This is wonderful area in which we can we can uh, share and make jugal bandi be between the Polish and the Pakistani musicians very famous, very traditional ones, Sufi music players in Pakistan and also folk music uh, players from Poland. Uh, we are trying to bring uh, every time some new, new singers and players to show the different kind of possibilities also in jazz music and others. And um, definitely uh, I, I love the, this kind of music in which uh, the two cultures uh, uh, mix together. Like uh, Tagore said once, uh, music is such a universal language which doesn't need any translation. So, so this is a wonderful interaction between our two cultures. We are going to make more in this area because uh, just now, uh, today, I met a, a Pakistani uh, musician who has invited us to join the next Coke Studio session. That will be really great for the large audience uh, that our music will be also uh, played together with Pakistan music. Coke Studio is a very good platform. Yeah, I was going to ask you if, uh, this, if po Polish singers would like to come and sing for Pakistanis as well. So you've already answered that. We've also heard that Poland is a very a heritage uh, country, like it has a lot of heritage. So would you tell us something about the sites over there which you, uh, the tourists can visit? Are there any good sites that you can recommend? The history of modern Poland started uh, in 10th century. So we have um, uh, wonderful historic sites, uh, castles and uh, old cities which, uh, which are really worth seeing. Uh, especially the ancient capital of Poland, Krakow, which was uh, the uh, city intact in the war, unlike the others, unlike Warsaw, which was totally destroyed in the Second World War by the invaders, Krakow offers still the, the beauty of the old uh, uh, Middle Ages architecture 
uh, combined by, by the modern sectors of, of uh, uh, tourist uh, 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 sectors. And also nearby Krakow, there is a wonderful place, unique in the world, which is Vilichka Salt Mines, which uh, to my Pakistani friends uh, reminds about Kura Mines as well. Vilichka Salt Mines is also uh, as historic uh, as uh, Kura, and uh, it's wonderfully carved in salt with uh, chapels, figures, uh, and uh, it's also a um, good um, place for a sanatorium, treating lung diseases, because uh, being there for some people for two weeks in the sanatorium, they can treat uh, uh, the lungs, uh, uh, you know, uh, problems. Northern Poland is uh, with sea, so do, uh, does it have beaches as well? Yes, of course, and, and beaches mostly in the sea, Baltic Sea, but also in uh, Mazurian lakes area, which is also unique uh, that uh, it's a country of thousand lakes, in which also uh, there are beautiful forests and uh, best uh, location for family vacations. Lots of people so coming. 9,000 plus lakes. Yes. But this, you know, many reports say that Poland is one of the uh, most peaceful country in the world. How does it stop its population? Still 38.5 million. The you know, Pakistan's population is... period relates to last 70 years only. I'm the first generation who did not uh, witness or fought in any wars. But my father, grandfather and all men in my family, they had to, to uh, uh, fight for the independence. As you know, uh, uh, Poland uh, is also a country which, uh, which uh, um, fought against invasions. Uh, so nowadays we can say this is the best time in our history. If we have peace for 70 years, never happened before in the history of Poland. This is the 70 years of development, construction and uh, great interactions with our neighbors. And uh, within uh, entering the, the EU in 2004, we have also naturally came back to our uh, European environment, uh, which is important for democracy, free market and development. So, so Excellency, uh, since you joined as ambassador of Poland and Pakistan, so what step have you taken to develop bilateral relations between Pakistan and Poland? I mean, uh, economic uh, relations, uh, trade relations and educational well, I'm very happy to state, first of all, that we enjoyed uh, excellent relations with Pakistan with no uh, outstanding issues whatsoever. So from the day one, my feeling, and also shared by other ambassadors and diplomats, I'm sure, in Islamabad, is that we are taken care of by our Pakistani friends, that, that the, um, both the government and also public is very open and friendly to us. So I'm sure that we will achieve much more in, in the, the level of exchange between Pakistan and Poland. Well, economy is, is most important, of course, and in this area we have started some projects already which will bring fruits uh, in the years to come, inshallah. I'm very sure that uh, with the great support from Pakistan government we will achieve the success. Uh, first of all, it's the area of energy sector, in which uh, some Polish companies are operating since many years already. We have already noticed some success, especially in Sint area, in the gas exploration when Polish oil and gas company has already opened a new uh, gas processing facilities supplying gas to the Pakistani network. Uh, this company has announced that uh, they are willing to multiply their investment. So this is our message also about Pakistan. Thanks to the conditions created by the Pakistan government, our companies are doing successfully their, their good work and also uh, we are going to increase that. Most recently, uh, Polish uh, minister has visited Pakistan. Do you expect? Are you expecting any high-level delegation visiting Pakistan in the future? Yes, definitely. This uh, my mission started in November, so the first um, visit has been um, paid by the deputy minister of defense, which is yet another area of our uh, prospective uh, cooperation. Uh, we expect that. Um, uh, some high-profile visit uh, may also be paid by the end of this year and few agreements will be signed. One of them is an agreement on the cooperation between the two ministries of defense. The other one relates also to culture. Uh, uh, I'm bringing the 
draft a memorandum of understanding to the Pakistan TV, also to cooperate with Polish television, so that the, the films and, and cultural uh, um, programs could be exchanged in both between both Let's countries. Let's please talk a bit more about Pakistan's worst energy crisis Pakistan has been facing for the last several years. So you mentioned that your company is exploring gas. Has it started producing gas or it's gonna start or because you are rich in producing? Yes, uh, yes, they have been investing since many years and from the last few years they have series of successful opening of, of new uh, wells. So in the Sindh province the production of gas is increasing and is going to be um, increased eight times bigger as it, it is now. This is uh, the report from Polish oil and gas company and also others are, are working in assistance to other also Pakistani companies. Geophysica is one of the companies which is making the seismic research, uh, finding the, the new resources of gas. So this area is very prospective and I'm sure that we'll achieve much more success. The other area is also mine uh, production, in which Poland has a vast experience because uh, from last uh, more than 100 years, Poland was one of the major uh, coal producing countries in Europe. So with our expertise, we would like to, to, to bring our companies and our experts to Pakistan and find out what are the possibilities uh, to, to, to create, uh, to uh, support the mine production and also energy production in Pakistan. We have also clean coal energy to offer and other uh, green energies, uh, which is also, I think, in the interest of Pakistan to cooperate with us. Uh, that's your contribution in energy crisis. So, can you please tell us something about defense cooperation? Would you like to elaborate it? What, what kind of cooperation is it in defense area? First of all, uh, the number of contacts has been increased uh, between the, the military. Um, uh, also, uh, Polish uh, Navy is going to participate as observers in Amman, uh, um, in Karachi, next year. Uh, we have also a um, number of businessmen coming uh, and presenting our offers, in which Poland is uh, really a developed country, now, country nowadays. We have um, uh, modern equipment, which is uh, less expensive than, than some of the uh, uh, Western ones. So I think we find uh, uh, this niche in which uh, it may be attractive to, to Pakistan. Good quality, also in modernization of, uh, of uh, Pakistan uh, equipment, both Army and, uh, and uh, the Air, uh, Air Force, in, in which also there is a history. I think uh, you will let me later tell about history of uh, Polish contribution to that particular area, which is part of great history of, of our interaction and relations. Okay, now so are you satisfied with the trade volume that, uh, that is currently between Pakistan and Poland? And are, do you aim to increase it during your tenure? The trade volume is, is not satisfactory uh, to us because um, I'm really convinced that both our economies have much more to offer to each other nowadays. It's uh, uh, roughly for the year 2015, it, it's been uh, $360 million. I'm sure that uh, with new um, deals uh, in the areas which I have already mentioned, we can multiply it really. Uh, Two-thirds uh, uh, covers um, uh, the Pakistan export to Poland, which is natural because Pakistan is also our uh, long partner in, in um, supplying of um, rice, um, um, uh, surgical instruments, um, leather and leather products, especially sportswear, which are very famous. You know that the football match for, for the cup was also presented from Pakistan. So this is the area uh, of traditional uh, interactions and, and cooperation. Besides the areas that you have mentioned do you, uh, about the collaboration between Pakistan and Poland, are there any other areas or the projects which are going on between Pakistan and Poland? We are now uh, um, considering uh, exchange in the modern technologies and also uh, IT sector as well. But uh, I, I hope that also for uh, uh, in the area of production of energy, we can, we can be uh, um, really successful in providing the coal mining uh, technologies and clean coal and uh, clean energies as well. Pakistan feels uh, really proud to be uh, exporting rice to you, but I would like to ask since uh, Poland is like 50% of the land is dedicated to farming, so why not grow your own rice? Why export? 
uh, import? Uh, well, our climate does not uh, let us uh, grow uh, rice, but you have touched a very important uh, area of cooperation, which is again num number three in line, but also very important. Poland has a really developed agriculture, and we are number one uh, producer of potatoes in the, uh, Europe, and also producer of, of uh, livestock. So, so we have um, in this area found uh, uh, wonderful proposals for, for Pakistan agriculture, especially for the food processing, for the food processing industry. So are you offering any um, things to like uh, the farming farmers over here or something, any visas or something for Yes, yeah, so we, we are offering and uh, we are in touch with the Minister of Ag Agriculture of Pakistan now to find, uh, to find the uh, viable projects. What role did the Polish um, pilots play in the Pakistan's defense? This is a great history of, we are, of which we are very proud of. This is the history of Polish pilots who were commissioned by Pakistan Air Force in 1947 right after the war, to um, establish the very uh, basics of uh, instruction and organization of Pakistan Air Force. The history of Polish pilots started uh, much earlier, because uh, when Poland uh, fought the war against uh, Nazi Germany, uh, our forces um, uh, were also part of the Allied forces in the Western Europe. Our pilots had the uh, highest possible uh, uh, qualities uh, and uh, combat experience, they have contributed also to the famous Battle, of, Battle for England, in which uh, a majority of uh, Polish pilots uh, rejected the Lufthansa invasion, so they saved the UK from the, from the Hitler's invasion at that time. However, after the war, they could not come back to, to their home country, because the country became part of communist bloc, and uh, frankly, they would uh, suffer, they would be persecuted if they uh, came home. So they uh, took this invitation to Pakistan so that uh, they uh, contributed in their, with their special skills to the establishment of very sophisticated uh, uh, Pakistan Air Force. Many of them uh, lived here longer, for 30 years even, so that Pakistan became their home. It's like my home now. So we are very proud of our pilots. We are uh, collecting the history, documents, photographs, and uh, uh, planning to issue a book in which the history of Polish pilots should be uh, described properly. Before the interview, you were mentioning one specific case of uh, yes. any pilot. Would you like to? The, the, the commander of the group of 30 Polish pilots was Air Commodore Turowicz. He has contributed also to uh, Superco program and uh, he was uh, one of the godfathers of Pakistan missile program as well. So uh, himself and his wife, his wife was also a pilot. She was um, uh, training uh, young Pakistani uh, paragliders as well. So they lived in Karachi, in Lahore. This became their, ho their home, their home country. They were awarded with all possible Pakistani military awards. Now we have, uh, this is also part of our memorial uh, um, uh, where in Karachi, in Gorakabristan, there is a monument in memory of our Polish pilots and also Polish refugees. This history also is uh, uh, very important That's to us. That's like the height of cooperation between Pakistan and Poland. Even they are contributing in defense and all these areas. One of the fastest rising economies in the world, Polish. Polish people. So, so what's the sources of income? Uh, it, it depends on, on tourist income or, or do you have some other revenue as well? Well, services is really important part of, of the revenue, like uh, in other developed countries. But we have also a very developed uh, industry and highly developed agriculture. So all these parts of economy are, are contributing. So, so Excellency, uh, Poland has the highest uh, literacy rate. So, uh, do you offer any sort of opportunity to Pakistani students to uh, study in Poland? We consider the, the most efficient way to um, establish direct contacts between the universities because in that way it can be uh, efficiently organized. Students of uh, second degree especially uh, who are coming from Pakistan to specific Polish universities, they are uh, uh, upgrading their um, uh, education. 
Uh, in the areas uh, like uh, engineering and uh, medical studies, this is the highest number of students. Although uh, it's not, again, satisfactory to me that uh, I would like to, to bring more Polish students and uh, uh, provide them with education. This is also how we can create friendship between the people, because those who, who lived in Poland, they also come with uh, very good impressions. Uh, same as our impression of Pakistan here. By living in Pakistan, uh, everybody is made friend of Pakistan and, and really advocating Pakistan in the international arena. So, so, so do you have any plan to develop cross-cultural relations between Pakistan and uh, Poland? I think this area should be much more developed. We are trying our best as the embassy also to bring the people-to-people uh, -people contact together. Because uh, so far, uh, the countries were so far in geographical sense, but we are very near uh, as people. There is a great uh, uh, testimony to it, uh, which I can see from Polish-Pakistani marriages, which are very successful and very happy indeed together. Are you going to give more Pakistan chance Pakistani to visit Poland. and find more opportunities? <laughs> uh, my secretary, uh, the Polish lady who is working with me here at the embassy, she's married to a Pakistani husband and for many years she lived in Karachi, now living in Islamabad. This is the testimony of, of great uh, proximity of hearts and minds, which we really have. That's very interesting. And she is also the author and on hopefully the... Hopefully it will multiply soon. It, <laughs> I hope so. And, and uh, she's also the author of a book on Pakistan, which I may recommend translation into English, because this is a great history of a Polish lady who comes to Karachi and lives in Pakistani family. So this is wonderful history story, which I'm really... That's very interesting. So you read Ghalib, Iqbal, and Thakki, these are Pakistani like famous uh, poly, uh, poets. So you read them as well. Can you read Urdu? I'm trying to read the poetry itself, but also translations. And, and uh, why it is so difficult? Because the language and, and poetry is very rich, deep in meaning, wonderful, with, with uh, very sophisticated uh, uh, words. So this, this is the beauty of it. But at the same time, it is uh, becoming a little difficult to a foreigner to, to grasp it all. So I'm reading uh, the original, but also uh, uh, translations. Which well, your Urdu is very fluent, by the way. So, which kind of poetry you read? Romantic, sad? Or? Well, Garib, Garib is, is especially uh, one of those uh, favorite ones, but also Iqbal, very uh, great poet, uh, very uh, important also for Pakistan. And uh, uh, we have um, now supported the translations into Polish directly from the original, which is, which is uh, the real contribution in our Oriental studies. Uh, we have, I can uh, also recommend uh, the Oriental Studies in Warsaw University and Krakow University, another one in Poznan University, now open a few years back, uh, where our specialists, uh, they are not only fluent in Urdu, but they are um, making deep research into cultural and literary studies. It's yet another area in which we can bring our people closer together by sharing our poetry in, in Urdu and also translating uh, Urdu poetry into Polish. This is also one of the areas, uh, one of the goals of my mission. Interesting. So do you listen fusion music? Fusion music is wonderful, in which uh, East meets West and uh, they play together. This is also the, my, uh, from my Oriental studies when I started as a student, one of the, of the most favorite, favorite uh, areas. Which singer you like more in Pakistan? And also, as you know, the, the Jugal Bandi in, in our embassy, the, the program, uh, musical program which we, which we make every year is also part of this uh, fascination and, and really wonderful part of exchange as That's well. That's very interesting title, Music Without Borders. Yes, Music Without Borders. These are exactly. things which could bring nations together yes, and yes. all these. And this is the message of peace also and a message, yeah. message of how alike are we, Poles and Pakistanis, uh, regardless of geographical distance, which is now becoming shortened because uh, there is just a few hours flight between uh, Karachi or Islamabad and Poland, Warsaw, so that we can uh, go and, and, and visit each other and so enjoy. So when can we listen Polish singers here in Islamabad? 
the next uh, edition of uh, Music Without Borders will be here in, in April, but also uh, uh, we are promised uh, that uh, in the great uh, program uh, of Coke Studio, the Polish artists may join the Pakistani artists in the next edition. So, so I'm really looking forward to it. Would love to. Uh, you mentioned your MOU signing with, with PTV. What is the objective of that? PTV is state TV here in Pakistan. Uh, the, the memorandum uh, will uh, give us the opportunity to exchange the programs on both television, national televisions, so that uh, Polish films can be uh, presented to Pakistani audience and Pakistani films in Poland. I think this will also uh, bring uh, much interest from our uh, viewers as well and uh, I'm sure that the Pakistani viewers will enjoy them. Could you please tell me how can Poland cater Pakistan in the European market? In cooperation with Pakistan Embassy in Warsaw, we are developing the project in which uh, the Poland is becoming the hub for Pakistani uh, export products to Europe. Poland is geographically located right in the center of Europe. So whenever you would like to have uh, any means for transportation to Finland, Portugal, UK or Greece, Poland is the, the uh, shortest, nearest way to, to rent a truck or to, to send the goods. So this is one uh, uh, great idea in which uh, uh, we are going to become a gateway of Pakistani exports to Europe. I think this is a very good project in which we... Uh, Especially Pakistan is rich in, in uh, rice and other textile stuff. Exactly. So. And also Poland, as you know, was a, a great friend of Pakistan advocating um, Pakistan um, cause in the, within the Europe, e European Union. The GSP uh, arrangement was also supported largely by the Polish diplomacy and we uh, continue doing this. You have spent ages in this region, in Pakistan as deputy head of mission, then Afghanistan, then India, then again Pakistan as ambassador. So which specific areas you liked more, uh, like as a tourist, as a visitor, which city or which areas you liked more? I hope I'm, I'm not that old, uh, uh, but this is really 25 years which I happily spent in the areas of, I would say, uh, related to Mughal Empire. As I started my oriental studies in Tashkent, my teachers of history were always reminding the story of Babur and Babur Nama. So, so, so in some ways, I'm following the steps of Babur. Uh, recently, when I was going to Kura Mine on the way uh, in Kalar Kahar, there was a tahta uh, that Babur stood some years ago over the lake and writing his memoirs probably so it gave me feeling that also i'm following the steps and uh, of a great mughal empire uh, up to lahore agra delhi and elsewhere <clears throat> in my my career i have already um, been posted to uh, bangladesh for six years six years in pakistan as well as a deputy head of mission before so first time i'm ambassador but already uh, had my wonderful six years uh, in Pakistan so already, Pakistani nationality. <laughs> and, and the next, nationality. and the next also, uh, I spent six and uh, six seven years in India as well. So this is um, like feeling at home. And now after this many years, if you, uh, it's fascinating to see how the countries are changing. Uh, lots of developments in Pakistan. Islamabad also looks. Uh, not the same, you know, it's still the very green, beautiful Islamabad of, of my times, but it's also developed with a new uh, uh, metro bus and uh, new so many construction sites in which you have wonderful buildings around. And also uh, uh, it's was fascinating to see how the society is responding to the globalization, to the modern problems which we all face. You know, even in Poland, uh, during war, it, it had to face like thousands of lives. So you, you spent ages in this region, in conflict zone. What would you suggest, how can these enemies like Pakistan, India, then conflict with Afghanistan and all these, in this region, there is always conflict. So what is your observation and suggestion so that this conflict could end ever? We have also our... Um long experiences in dealing both with enemies and, and uh, reconciliation processes. Uh, I think our reconciliation process with Germany is of unique example how we could start after centuries of hostilities the new uh, relationships. But 
it needs uh, um, willingness on both sides. Uh, uh, it's not impossible because Jeremy, this you guys have examples for the world. Right, right. So, so this to is fix their uh, issues. It was started in our case with uh, uh, relation with Germany by the uh, letters between the bishops uh, of Poland to the bishops of Germans, in which uh, we have forgiven them and asked forgiveness on a spiritual level first, and then on the on the political only, because uh, during the communist times. The ideas of the communist government was to, to make us scared of Germans so that we side with the Soviet Union. Nowadays, uh, uh, in the free democratic Europe, our countries have been changed. So the Germany is our first partner and friend and also economic partner. So past enemies could be present uh, friend. So what do you suggest in this region's countries to be to fix their issues, especially these uh, or conflicts. How, who could fix these issues? Whether this region need UN's help, West's help, or they can themselves fix their issues? Well, I believe like in, in Europe, um, the changes were possible first when the political setup was changed. As long as we had Soviet Union uh, in our neighborhood, it was impossible for Poland to join back its, its uh, natural place uh, in, in Central Europe, which means also culturally and politically. Uh, the governments uh, have to shake hands and this is up to the uh, stronger and bigger one first to, to start the process. And also it requires lots of uh, changes and uh, work in the, for instance, education of the people because um, the um, reconciliation process in Germany was also assisted by the revision of school books by the special commission which was um, erasing any hostile or wrong statements against each other and instead bringing the, the message of modern and, and peaceful. You know, how can like Pakistan and India spend money on education and health when they have fought four wars? They have, you know, they spend huge money on defense things. So how can they then spend money on education and health? You know, we share exactly the same uh, history and I'm very optimistic that where is the willingness, then everything is possible. We have also um, some uh, difficult relations with our eastern neighbor, which has been superpower at the, at the expense of, of its neighbors. But also in the relations with this uh, superpower, we are following step by step the same uh, process, uh, revision of history books in which uh, admission must be there if there were problems, killings of wars. We have to uh, admit first to change uh, the situation. So it may take years, but I'm very optimistic that this is the right way to do so. And also the international community should come and assist uh, for that purpose. So where is a will, there is a way. That yes. should be yes. opted here as well. We are very optimistic because after hundreds of wars in Europe, now we enjoy, we enjoy the 70 years of peace and hope uh, to uh, sp spread this message also in other countries. Thank you so much, Excellency, for your time. So, viewers, um, if Poland can resolve all its issues after giving up so many soldiers and so many lives, then why can't Pakistan? with its neighboring countries and all the other conflicts. So Poland is a very interesting country to visit with its mo monuments, lakes, seashores and uh, the water lakes. So um, it enchants every traveler to visit it. Thank you so much for watching.